What's up guys, Justin here with TheRealTimeEssentials.com back with another Unreal Engine tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the basics of setting up materials inside of Unreal Engine. So we'll talk about how to set up colors, and then we'll get into setting up materials with textures. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so let's start off by talking about how to apply textures to an object. So this is the shader ball model that comes with the starter content that you can load in when you create a new um, project inside of Unreal Engine. And if you look inside of the starter content folder, there's a folder for materials. And so first off, let's click on our shader ball and take a look at it. So we've got our shader ball right here, and you can see on the right hand side under our details, there are slots on this object where we can apply materials to the object. There's two slots in here, meaning there's two different parts of this that have been mapped for materials. I don't want to get too far into that right now. Just note that you do have places where you can put materials. And so if we were to go into the starter content folder and drag a material into one of those slots or onto our object like this, you can see how it's going to apply a material to this object. So in its simplest way, what we need is we need a material that's inside of our content browser that we can then apply to an object. And notice how we can replace this by dragging multiple different materials onto the surface at once. And also notice when you drag a new material on here, sometimes you get that um, you get that note that says shaders compiling. That just means that Unreal Engine is taking all of the data and applying it to this object, so it's working in the background a little bit. So this is kind of our base. Now let's talk about how we can create our own materials instead of applying um, pre-made materials. And so I'm going to go ahead and put this back as was, and let's go back into our content folder. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to make a place where we can store our different materials. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click in this space and we're going to add a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder materials. And this is just basically a way of keeping your projects organized. So now if we double click in here, we can start adding our folders or we can start adding our materials into this folder. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a new material. So you're just going to go up to material and click on it right here. And let's go ahead, let's call this color. So I'm just going to type in a value for color right here. And we could take this and apply it to our object right here. Notice how nothing's actually happening to this right now, um, but we have created a color right here. So now what we want to do is we want to edit that color so that it actually has some information associated with it. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to double click on the color right here, that's going to pop up a node editor. And so the node editor works a lot the same way that a node editor would in something like Blender or any other node program or any other program that uses nodes to manage materials. Basically what it is, is it's a visual way of adding the data that you need in order to apply the materials. And so right now, if we look at this, we've got a preview ball right here where we can click and drag in order to move this around. You can click in here to set different kinds of previews. We're going to leave it on the sphere. There's some other things having to do with the material that we'll worry about in a second. But notice how this starts with this base color node. So this is our overall node where all of the data about our color is going to come together. And so what I want to do in this situation is I want to add a constant three vector node. So you can either drag that out of the list here, or you can hold three and left click. So if you hold three and left click, that's going to add this node in here. This is a little box that has a little color area that we can click on or double click on in order to get to a color picker. And so that is going to allow us to set an RGB value or an HSV value. It's basically going to let us set a color value inside of Unreal Engine. So notice how I can click and drag this around in order to adjust that. And then when I'm done, once I've picked a color, so I'm going to pick blue and I'm going to turn the value up, we're going to click on OK. Well, notice how now this gives us a little preview right here of the color that we've created. So we use this in order to set our color value inside of our material. Well, notice how right now it's still not showing up over here on the left hand side. And so the reason for that is because we haven't connected the nodes between this node and this node right here. So notice how all of these affect different properties having to do with our object. So for this one, for example, I'm going to drag this node into my base color. Well, notice how when I do that, now this material is showing up as a blue material. 
So we've created our first material. And what we can do is we can click on the Save button in order to save this asset. And so when we do that, if we go back into Unreal Engine, notice how the color that's been applied to this has changed to match the changes that we made inside of our, uh, inside of our material blueprint right here. So this is basically how we're gonna set up our materials. So next, let's do something else with this. Let's actually create another color. Let's actually create another material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click in here. And for this one, we're gonna create another material and we'll call it shiny paint. And so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on it. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna start by adding a constant three vector in here. And this time let's make it like a red. So I'll just double click in here. We'll pick a red color. We'll turn our value up and we'll click on OK. So now this is a red material. And notice how it's kind of a dull material in the sense that we're getting a little bit of light bouncing off of it, but we're not getting a lot. And so there's a couple different ways we could make this more reflective. So the first way is we could add a metallic value. What that would do is that would make our surface look metallic. And so in order to do this, what we wanna do is instead of using the three vector right here, we wanna use a constant vector right here. So I'm just gonna drag a constant node in here. Well then, if I take the constant and I drag the value from here into the metallic, for example, notice how nothing's going to change yet because that's set to zero. But this is basically giving us the ability to set a material value. So in this case, if we were to take this, click on it, and then come over here and set the value for that material to one by clicking in it and hitting the enter key, notice how now this material is gonna act differently than it did before. It's going to be more metallic. And so if we set this to zero, it's not metallic. If we set it to one, it's metallic. And notice how when we set it to one, then it looks a little bit more like a piece of metal. And usually the metallic is set to either zero or one. Something is either metal or it's not. And so we don't necessarily want this to be metallic. So let's just right click on this and click the option for break node links. That's gonna remove the link between here and here. And instead, what I wanna do is I wanna drag this value into the roughness slot. And so if you mouse over the roughness slot, notice how it's gonna tell you that this controls how rough the material is. Really what that means is this is going to control how things or how light reflects off of the object. Notice how it tells us a roughness value of zero is gonna be a mirror reflection and one, which is what we have now, is completely matte or diffuse. What that means is that means that's not really going to reflect anything. So let's set this to zero real quick. So if we just set this to a value of zero, notice how now we're getting reflections off of this preview for the sun, the horizon, really everything. So it's very reflective because we set it to zero. So a lot of the time I'll put this to maybe like a 0.15 or something like that. That gives me a little bit of the light kind of being broken up by the surface um, because I don't want it to be like a mirror material. So now if we were to take this and click on the save button and then apply it to our object, so if I drag this onto my object, notice how I now have this kind of like reflective shiny paint material that's been applied to this object. So you can use the different values inside of your overall material node right here in order to get different results. All right, so now let's set up a texture rather than just a color material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this square floor texture from Polyhaven, because you can download this for free and really use it for whatever you want. So it's perfect for our example. So I will link to this in the notes down below. And what I wanna do is I just wanna download the zip file containing the different maps. So in this case, for example, I want something that's going to contain the ambient occlusion. So in this case, we're gonna focus on the diffuse map, the normal map, and the roughness map. So make sure you have those three checked and then we're gonna download this. So that's gonna download this file and then we can bring it into Unreal Engine. So side note, while this is downloading, I have put together a guide showing you exactly what the different PBR materials do. I know that can be a little bit confusing when you're first getting started. So if you do wanna learn what the different maps do, like the ambient occlusion, the normal, the roughness, other things like that, you can download that at the link in the notes down below. I'll make that available. I originally created it for my rendering channel, but I think it's uh, very relevant here. So check the notes below for that link. All right, and so first off, let's look at what's contained inside of this download. So if we open the folder, 
that's in here and you probably want to unzip it first. But what we want to do is we want to open the textures folder right here. We'll notice how this has a number of different images inside of it, right? It's got the ambient occlusion map. It's got the diffuse map, which is the actual color of the texture. Um, it's got a displacement map and a normal map. And so all of those are going to do different things. And so we want to bring a bunch of them in. We don't necessarily need all of them. We probably want most of them though. So usually what I try to do is I either within my materials folder like to create a folder for textures. So the texture are basically the 2D maps for the objects. You could also create it outside of your materials folder as well. So you could just create a completely new folder and call it textures. And so what you want to do is you want to take these material maps that you're going to use and you want to drag them into the textures folder. What you're doing is you're basically adding those as content that you can reference inside of your Unreal Engine project. Notice how, and it went away, but we got a little box saying that this was automatically converted to a normal map. Basically what it did is it automatically saw that this was a normal map and so it's going to treat it that way. So we don't need to worry too much about that right now, but just note that it did that. So we're going to go back into our materials folder and we're going to add a new material and I'm going to call this tile underscore square, something like that. Usually I like to lead with the name tile. So all of my tile will start with tile and then it'll have something after it. That way if I get a bunch of these in here and this sorts these alphabetically, those will all be grouped together. That's just kind of an organizational thing for me. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I find that helpful. So now let's open this up and take a look at it. So previously what we've been doing is we've been adding a constant three vector to this, right? So basically that allows us to set a value that's going to tell Unreal Engine what color this should be. Well now, we don't wanna do that. What we wanna do instead is we wanna use an image file in order to set the base color of our object because we want this to tile the image on our object. So what we wanna do instead is we wanna add a different kind of node. So I'm gonna right click in here. Notice how when you right click, it pops up this little window where you can search all of the different nodes. And in this case, I wanna go under texture and I wanna look for a texture sample node. And so we're gonna drag the RGB value of our texture sample node into our base color like this. Well, notice how this is giving us an error because we haven't given it an input texture, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna take that texture from our Unreal Engine content browser and we want to drag it into that texture. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit so that we can see our folders. We want to go into the textures folder and we want to find the diffuse map. So we're going to take our diffuse map and notice how we have this selected so we can actually um, drag this into the little slot right here. So we're going to drag that into our texture slot. You could also click the drop down and actually search through everything that's in your folder. But in this situation, I think this works just fine. So now, if we take a look at this, notice how this has applied that texture file to our preview object. And if it makes it easier, you could set this to like the cube primitive, since this is supposed to go on flat surfaces anyway. So now you can kind of see what this is doing. And so now what this is doing is this is taking this texture and it's applying it to this surface, right? So now if we were to jump back into Unreal Engine real quick, go to our materials, drag this in here, Notice how that tile material is going to show up on this surface. Oh, after I click the save button. Don't forget to click the save button. So now that tile material is showing up right here. But you might notice that the material that's created is way too smooth. So what we need to do is we need to go back into our material and add some additional information using our PBR maps. What we need to do is we need to apply those different maps in here to the like roughness and also to the normal. And so that's pretty easy to do. We just want to add a texture sample node. So I'm just going to right click, type in texture and look for texture sample. And then I'm going to do a control C and a control V to copy paste this. And what I want to do is I want to take the value of these nodes and drag them into those slots. So this one is going to be my roughness. This one is gonna be my normal. Notice how that kind of breaks the material right here. That's okay because we just need to apply those materials to these slots. So I need to apply my roughness map. And so I'll just make this smaller for a second and I'll go find my roughness map. So I'll just click on this node and I'll drag my roughness map into this value. And I'll click on this one and I'll drag my normal map into this value right here. So now 
if we look at our material, notice how it's much more realistic. And so if I click on the Save button and then go back and look at the material inside of Unreal Engine, notice how this is a lot more realistic of a material in here. And so Unreal Engine is using the information from the maps in order to set the way light is applied to this object. And so one thing that might or might not bother you is how reflective this is, even with those maps set up. And so if you want to do this, you can adjust the strength of those maps. So like right now, I feel like there's a little too much light bouncing off of this surface. It just makes everything look a little over glossy. So what I want to do is I want to adjust that roughness value. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my node setup right here. And what I want to do is I want to add a node in here um, called a multiply node. So if I use a multiply node, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to use math in order to adjust the strength of this map. So what I'm going to do is notice I've added that node in here. And what that does is that gives me a value of A, which is going to be the value that I'm bringing in. And then B is the value that things are going to be multiplied by, right? So basically what we're doing is we're doing math to the values that are coming out of this node. And so what I could do is I could set my B value on this node to something else. So let's say I was to set it to 0.25. Notice what that does is that makes this more reflective, right? So we're taking that value and we're multiplying it by 0.25. We're basically dividing it by four. However, if I was to set this to a value of something like two, Notice how this is not as reflective anymore. So it's taking this value, the RGB values that are coming out of here, and it's multiplying them. And so when it does that, what it's doing is it's toning down the reflection on this surface. So what I can do with that is I can just click on Save and then go back into my model or back into my scene. Notice how I don't have that over glossy look in here anymore, which is great. This looks a lot more realistic. So you can use that to control the effect of the maps inside of your node editor. And then one other thing is let's say that we wanted to change the size of this material. So if I set this to the cube, notice how these are very small. Um, these are very small tiles right here, which is okay because that's what the material is supposed to be. But let's say that we wanted to customize them a little bit. Well, what we can do is we can use a node called the texture coordinate node in order to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click over here, and I'm gonna look for texture coordinate node right here. That's gonna add a node right here. I'll notice how one of the things that's gonna allow me to do is adjust the tiling of my object. So let's drag this into our um, diffuse map, into the UVs slot. So if I drag this into the UVs slot, that's basically going to adjust the uh, size or the location inside of the 3D space of the material. Well, what I can do is notice how if I set this to something bigger, so if I type in two and two in the U and V tiling, notice how these actually get smaller. So what I wanna do instead is I wanna type in a value of 0.5 and 0.5. Well, notice how when I do that, these get bigger, right? So if I was to type in 0.25 and 0.25, Notice how these are now larger on here, but you may notice that we have a problem. And the problem is we've only applied this to our diffuse material right here. So we want to make sure that we drag this into our other maps as well. So drag this into your roughness map and drag it into your normal map like this. Now notice how this entire thing has changed and adjusted. So we can use this in order to quickly adjust the size of our objects. So let's say we wanted this to be a little smaller. We'll put these at 0.5 and 0.5 like this. Notice how this gives us full control over the size of our material. And if I save this and go back into Unreal Engine, you can see how this material is much larger inside of Unreal Engine. So there's a lot more we can do with materials. So leave a comment below. Let me know what else you'd like to learn about materials in Unreal Engine, or if you have any questions about anything we already talked about. So I will also link to my PBR materials guide, which is a guide I put together talking you through exactly what the different maps do. Um, you can download that by following the link in the notes down below. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.